This is Season 2, Episode 22 of My Modular Journey. And today we are overly excited to be presenting you with the Vermona Melodicer. The Melodicer is a stochastic pattern generator or advanced control voltage quantizer. Before the sickly amount of gushing begins, let me give you some stats here. Uh, the, the Melodicer came in around April 29th, uh, 2022. It was around $495 US, and it actually, I'd never heard of it before. It never showed up on any videos of any of the, of the 70 other pieces of gear I've purchased. This never came up in a video. And then on one of my own videos, a viewer named Etcom suggested something I might be interested in, and named the Melodicer, and I went and looked, and <laughs> off came the top of my head. I could not believe that I missed this module in in all the research, because I, I claim to be doing a lot of research. Yeah, that was a, a big shocker. So thank you, uh, Etcom, thank you for your suggestion. It has wound up being literally one of my favorites. Again, of the, of the other 70 favorites, it's one of my favorite modules in the rack. So what is it? Let's talk about that. It is a vision of the perfect balance between stochastic and deterministic creations of rhythm and melody. Uh, and that's from the website, and they are not kidding. This thing is, I think there's intelligence in here. I think there's a little person or a little, little alien living inside here doing stuff because I can't get it to sound bad. And believe me, I have no trouble making everything else in here sound terrible. But this guy is, I don't know, it's, it's not only... A, hmm. I'm gushing. All right, let me run down the list of stuff. Uh, while effectively being a one-track sequencer, which is precisely what it was designed for, not for programming static or even probabilistic sequences, but for generating intelligent melodies in key and over a specified range. It can clock internally, or you can, it could take an external clock. If you clock internally, you got a tap button here, like most things do. Uh, it has two gates and two CV inputs for automating a number of parameters. So here's a little matrix right here on the panel. If you put a CV into gate one and look at gate one, uh, you could tell it to, uh, like for instance, toggle dice rhythm or to re-dice rhythm or re-dice melody or restart position at one, all from, from just putting a CV into here. So that sounds pretty cool. And it's got four points to, to modulate all kinds of stuff. It's got volt per octave and gate outputs over here for sending whatever it is generating out to your instrument, of course. There are these 12 semitone sliders here, and the higher the slider goes, the more possible or probabilistic that note will play. So you can see, like, this is 100%. D will always play 100%, but D sharp may only play 50%. Uh, and e may only be 25%, etc., something like that. These four knobs across the top are for uh, note value, which is whether it's a quarter note, a half note, eighth note, triplet, uh, 32nd note. The next one is variation, whether it's a longer or shorter note that's going to be played. And that ties into the gate as to whether or not it's going to generate shorter. Like I th the thing I've found so far is when you're on shorter, it actually does mul like it will do some quarter notes and then suddenly throw in an eighth note or a 16th note. So I'm not sure if that's exactly having to do with gates, but I know that legato definitely does have to do with gates as far as uh, the more, the higher the legato is, the longer the notes will slur between the, you know, the, the, as they're changing. And then of course, the very last knob here is about rests, which this is honestly, to me, of all the things, this might be the magic right here because normally arpeggiators, like if you have this arpeggiator down here in Symphonia and you can see it's whirling away, it just goes da -da 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 -da, just a rapid fire nonstop. Whereas this, you throw in a percentage of, of weight possibilities. It's actually a note that's going to, like when it triggers, it's going to skip and fill it with space, uh, thus resting. So you wind up getting, this is where I think some of the, it's fooling my brain to think there's a little person in here because this is where it's it rests and it rests intelligently. It doesn't sound like you're, muting and unmuting a channel chaotically using C, you know using a gate cv it's uh yeah, it's pretty amazing pretty amazing what that does 
Uh, over here are the high and low sliders, meaning how low do you want to generate the, the D note and how high do you want to generate the D note. I think this is a five octave range. There's this 16 step encoder up here that's whirling away. And this is uh, where you could pick, you could pick uh, where do you want it to start? I want it to start at three, but I want it to stop at, at six. And so it just does this little four pattern doohickey here. So the, again, uh, set it back to, to one, set it back to 16, or I think you can double tap it and it just goes right back to what it was. This encoder is also used in edit mode. So if you put it in edit mode and then, and then start looking at this matrix, for CV1, if you select A, that means whatever you put into CV1 is going to add to the sequence, I like changing keys, changing notes, or, uh, and this is non-quantized, I believe, whereas transseq is uh, where it transposes the, the sequence up or down, low and high. You can also adjust the low and high through uh, by using which, whichever one of these you're picking, A, B, C, or D. And some of them can be picked multiple. Some of them can, you know, some of them are one or the other, but some of them are also, you can set them both. Uh, so now CV1 would actually take a, would change the low and the high in that case. So that's kind of, that's kind of neat. And then of course you move to two, you move to three, all the way up to seven, or actually it's, it's up to eight. There's a new one that's not in the manual. Oh, look at that. <laughs> There's one here that's not in the manual. So this one can say what your PPQN is. And so you see, I have it set to C, 24. So I think that's why I'm not having a problem with Pamela's PPQN 24 because they added, I think they must have added that since the manual was printed. So anyway, leaving edit mode, it goes back to run mode. Uh, there's also this really handy lock button right here. So if you have a pattern and everything's going and it's jamming along and it's sounding really good, you could lock the module and come in here and make a whole bunch of other changes and, and change all kinds of stuff. And then when you unlock it, your changes take effect. That is absolute brilliance right there because nothing else that here works that way. As soon as I touch something, it changes. This is the first time I've seen anything that works that way. So that's, that's pretty badass. I like that. And then of course, last but not least, we have our dice buttons. So here's a, these are dice rolls. One of them's for the rhythm, meaning the, the, the pattern, the pattern of the note actually being played. And then the melody is the note that's actually being played to regenerate uh, th the, the different melodies. And you can tap those all you want. You can CV in here and, uh, and roll the dice over and over again, like I was doing originally. Or if you push them both at once, and put them into the, the, turn off the lights, they are now in what's called real time mode and it will continually regenerate rhythms and, and melodies every loop. Uh, why I chose the Verona Melodicer, I just told the story. It was a pretty amazing su suggestion by Etcom. Now almost every time I flip on the modular, which is daily, I'm doing something with Verona Melodicer. Uh, the melodies that come out of this beautiful device are nothing short of perfection every time. No off notes, no pitch issues, unless the oscillator drifts, of course. No fumbling around waiting for that perfect pattern to lock in from power up to power down. The Melodicer provides wonderful solutions to my melody needs. The Melodicer breaks the agonizing workflow of first coming up with a melody and then painstakingly configuring it in the sequencer to play back, and in some cases with probabilistic or deterministic variants. The algorithm seems to, seems almost, I wrote that, I think I already said this. The algorithm seems almost intelligent as, as I throw tons of different sonic scenarios at it, yet it just jams right along effortlessly. Unlike the Turing machines or ornament and crime uh, analog shift registers, where you have to first fight with tuning and scaling and get it close and then wait for a pattern to emerge all willy nilly and then lock it into place and hope you did so in the right, in, in the correct interval, Melodicer just works. As far as how I'm gonna use it, I'm not even gonna answer that question. You get it, right? So with that, I'm gonna actually turn on, uh, I'm gonna turn on a part of this giant patch I'm building over here, uh, not to give you too much of a preview because it's kind of sucky right now, but it's really a great demonstration of what this guy does anyway. So let's start with that and see what happens. I guess I could probably explain what this patch is for. The, the patch, the monster patch I'm building, it's actually going to be a shootout between all of my random melody makers. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to pit Symphonian against Melodizer. I'm going to fit Turing Machine against, against uh, Analog Shift Register. I'm going to, I'm going to pit uh, NerdSec against Renee. 
and uh, and other things that are over in the other rack over here and i'm just going to let them fight it out and and you guys can judge which one of them makes the best melodies so for uh for this example let's uh let's see what uh, melodizer sounds like Start with just the D. Symphonian that's just doing a random arpeggiator.
Holy smokes. Absolutely brilliant. So yes, I have a whole lot of fun listening to Tony Banks in a box, just jamming crazy all over the map keyboard. Oh, this is me. This is, I'm, a, I'm a prog rocker keyboardist from the way back. <laughs> and so I absolutely love that exact kind of music, uh, all dark and gloomy and, and emotional and, and keyboardy. Kind of love it. So, Melodicer, Stochastic Pattern Generator. Man, I had a shit ton more things to demonstrate, but I think we're just going to cut it right here because I can't take anymore. My heart just can't take anymore. So that's it for episode 22 of my modular journey, the Vermona Melodicer. Coming up next is actually nothing. This is the end of my modular journey. Season two is concluding. That'll be the next episode is my conclusion where I'll wrap things up and talk about the season and future plans. So stay tuned for that.